responsible for a lot of suffering and probably hundreds of deaths. Se vive, se siente, la Amazonia está presente. Se vive, se siente, la Amazonia está presente. ¿Qué queremos, compañeros? Justicia. ¿Qué queremos, compañeros? Justicia. A ellos no les importa la vida de ustedes, compañeros. A ellos no les importa qué agua consumen ustedes. A ellos no les importa qué piensan ustedes, ni cuántos de sus hijos han muerto, ni cuánta gente está con cáncer en la actualidad y continúan mujeres abortando. A ellos lo único que les interesa es su dinero. Eso le interesa a Texaco. Compañeros, debemos decirle que esas violaciones de derechos humanos en forma constante, en forma permanente, se siguen dando por Texaco. Pablo has been a human rights activist since he was a teenager. He lived in one of the most affected communities in Shushufindi. He lived with the contamination. He saw his family suffer the ill effects of the contamination. He put himself through law school. Uh, he was a very poor, from a very poor family. He put himself through law school. Just three years ago, he became a lawyer. And since he was already a member of the Frente, he became the lead lawyer on the case and is now has done an amazing job in taking the case through the last uh, phase of it. His commitment, his integrity, the way that he carries the work uh, is just, just unparalleled and such a blessing for the people of the region. Uh, he's just someone who inspires people. Yo he tenido muchos problemas con empresas en mi vida de Trabajar por los derechos humanos es, es muy riesgoso y mucho más en esta zona que es muy conflictiva. Y en mi familia han pasado muchos casos, entre ellos la muerte de uno de mis hermanos que hace tres años fue asesinado en mi pueblo, en Suchofindi. Fue brutalmente asesinado. pero la verdad es que estoy dispuesto a enfrentarlo y hoy no me importa. Estoy en esta causa y voy a seguirla hasta donde me permitan vivir. Estamos haciendo lo humanamente posible en la Corte de Justicia para que el juez actúe con imparcialidad, con rectitud, apegado a la ley. Pero debemos entender que al frente hay una empresa monstruosa, que tiene recursos económicos para comprar la conciencia de muchos gobernantes, de ministros, de jueces, de autoridades, de peritos, de técnicos, de médicos, pero jamás podrá comprar la conciencia de ustedes. Sepan ustedes que mientras ustedes continúen en esta lucha constante, en esta forma enérgica de exigir justicia, de exigir que Texaco remedie todo el daño causado, quienes estamos al frente como abogados, Vamos a continuar esta lucha, pase lo que pase. Vamos a continuar adelante, compañeros. I think the global community needs to learn two things. One is oil companies should never be allowed to get away with what Texaco did in Ecuador. And two, that it's possible to fight back. Just as the economic exploitation is globalized, so can the resistance to the destruction of humanity be globalized. And I think that's what we're trying to do via the mechanism of this case. The, the evidence is overwhelming against Chevron Texaco. It's overwhelming. So the only way this case is going to be lost is corruption, pure and simple. But with the international attention that's coming to this, and part of what we're doing here is to just continue that international attention, the likelihood that the corruption can get away with it is, is diminishing. And if justice happens here, the precedent is unbelievable. You know, because all the situations around the world where oil companies have created, I mean, Exxon still hasn't paid a dime on the Valdez. They're still fighting, uh, what is it, almost 20 years later. So this is what all these oil companies fear, is that if they actually pay out, then they'll have to pay out for everything they've been doing. What I, I mean, I think at a certain point in history, we're going to look back uh, on oil, certainly in the last 40 or 50 years, and, and perceive it more as organized crime. Than, than anything, because basically what they're selling to us is a devastated future.
One company that continues to do well despite the slump in the market is Chevron. The Sam Ramon-based company's profits are soaring right now. It reported it earned $5.38 billion during the second quarter. That is up a billion from the same time last year. It's unbelievable what they've done here. And the fact that they're not even willing to step up and clean up what they did, even though it's a fraction of their profits, it's systematic of their worldview. And, um, but times are changing. When you look at the Ecuadorian Amazon, the northern part of the Ecuadorian Amazon has been devastated by much of the activities we've been talking about by Chevron. Now, the central and southern part of the Ecuadorian Amazon have con ha are still pristine. However, they're threatened by oil companies as well. In fact, the, a few years ago when you looked at the map for Ecuador, pretty much 90% of the Ecuadorian Amazon is planned to be oil production areas. Even national parks are open for oil drilling. The largest oil field found in Ecuador since the Texaco find is right underneath the Yasuni National Park. It's one of the few areas that didn't freeze during the Ice Age. And it's an area that repopulated the biodiversity of the Amazon after the Ice Age. It's the most biodiverse area of the entire Amazon. And underneath it is the largest oil reserves in Ecuador. So what are you going to do? You're going to create another rainforest Chernobyl there? You're going to kill your source of life? And so thankfully, there's leadership in Ecuador right now that has basically said, um, we don't want to see what happened here in northern Ecuador happen in Yasuni. <laughs> Es por eso que el gobierno ha decidido darle la opción a la comunidad internacional que pague el 50% del costo que representa dejar ese crudo bajo tierra, apenas el 50%. El pueblo ecuatoriano, el gobierno ecuatoriano, la nación ecuatoriana, un pueblo pobre que necesita acuciantemente esos recursos está dispuesto a sacrificar el 50% de esos recursos como un emblema, como una bandera para que el resto de los continentes, el resto de los países asuman también su responsabilidad de conservar el medio ambiente. What's happened around that is that there's a public campaign so that individuals can help support buying the oil to keep it in the ground. It's almost like an adopt an acre campaign, but it's like buying some barrels of oil to keep them in the ground. And so it's a very unique economic precedent that could be happening here. So I think in Ecuador, tipping the balance, like seeing the worst of the worst, and then making this choice to say, no, we're drawing a line right here at the heart of the world and saying, Biodiversity, life itself, is more important than fueling our addiction to oil. That could be the first domino in the post-petroleum economy. And as the world is fully coming on board with this, you know, that we have to address climate change, it just feels like we could actually be turning the future in the right direction after decades of moving in the wrong direction. Justicia que pide el pueblo